Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to maximize or minimize our objective function given some constraints. So this is going to be our basics into linear programming and basically what we have is we have a set of constraints which are some inequalities and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the feasible region and we're going to look at um, the vertices of that, inner, of that feasible region, the, va the points where our boundary lines uh, intersect or our constraints intersect and we're going to use those values to basically optimize our objective function to look for the maximum and the minimum values. Now, your objective function, you know, typically responds to this, you know, we look into like some business problems or whatever where you have your different constraints and we might, the objective function might represent the costs for the business or it might represent the revenue. So sometimes we're gonna wanna maximize obviously revenue and then sometimes we'll look for like the minimum way to, um, you know, for costs. So it, it's very, very helpful and very applicable out to the real world, but we're just gonna kinda go through it without really some word problems because basically the process is the same, it's just throwing in some words. And I'm gonna say, here's the constraints and here's our objective function that we're gonna optimize. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do um, when working through these problems is to graph our feasible solution. So to do that, we're going to want to graph our inequality. Now, typically when graphing our inequalities here, we're basically going to be using the first quadrant. All right. Um, if I have x is greater than 0, that's going to be a vertical line at 0, greater than or equal to. And greater than is going to tell us all values to the right. So in, especially when I'm dealing with the feasible solution, that's what we really only care about. I'm just going to put arrows to tell me that the values to the right are going to be true. Then I have y is less than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. I messed up. I was going to say that, that wouldn't deal, be dealing with too much in the first quadrant. So then I have my next one, which is y is greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be a horizontal line. And that's going to be all the values above. Above. And then we have the last one, which is x plus y is less than or equal to 9, which again, we can rewrite that as y, um, or sorry, x plus y is less than or equal to 9. If I subtract the x, subtract the x, I have y is less than or equal to negative x plus 9. So I go to my y-intercept at 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, put a point. And then basically that's going to tell me to go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1. And you keep on kind of following that pattern here. And I know my line is like really bad, but basically I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And, okay. And that is going to be less than, so that's going to be the values in below. Now, it was really important for me to use the slope intercept so I could identify our vertices, because you can see here is our feasible region, right? It's bounded by these points, or what we call our vertices. So that is our feasible region. So what we're going to do when we want to optimize our function, what we're going to look for in this case, because I'm not going to give you a problem where we're going to try to find the maximum or just find the minimum, we're going to find both. So we're going to look at what are the coordinate points for each of these um, values. Well, this is 0, 9. This point is 9, comma 0. And this point is 0, 0. OK, so basically what we're going to do is we are going to plug in our coordinate points for our vertices into our, objective, into our objective function and determine the max and the minimum values. So if I have c is equal to 2 times, let's do x is 0, um, plus 3 times 9 is my y, then I could do the next point, 2 times 9 plus 3 times 0. And then I could do 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0. All right, so let's see what those are. That's obviously 0. 3 times 9 is 27. That's 0. 2 times 9 is 18. And 0, 0 equals 0. So therefore, in this case, you can see that the value for our maximum, our maximum um, output is going to be 27 or the coordinate point 0, 9. 
and our minimum value is going to be 0 or the coordinate point at 0, 0. And that's basically what we're going to do. All right, so now let's go and get into this example here. I have, uh, let's go ahead and graph it. So again, we're going to do the same thing here. OK, so I have x is greater than negative 5. So I'm going to go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, again, that's going to be a vertical line. And that's going to be points to the right. So I'll do an arrow. Um, I have x is less than or equal to 0. Let me just make sure I wrote all these. x is less than or equal to 0. Okay. So I'm going to have another value here at 0. And it's going to be all the values that are less than. So that's going to be going to the left. Now, again, I said it's often in the first quadrant, but it's not always in the first quadrant. So I kind of you know, used most of the first quadrant here. But you know, your functions could be totally different. So don't just assume it's always in the first quadrant. Um, it really kind of depends on what the context of what type of problem you're doing. y is greater than negative 2. So I'll go down to negative 2. And y is greater than, so that's going to be all values that are greater than. And y is less than or equal to 2. So I'll go up to 2. Do another horizontal line. And that's going to be all values that are below. So right now we have this nice little box right here. But we have one last objective function. Oh, I'm sorry, that is your objective function. OK, cool. So you can see my box here contains these coordinates where all of my um, all of my uh, constraints intersect. So let's see what these points are. So I have the point 0, comma 2. I have the point negative 5, comma 2. I have the point negative 5, negative 2. And I have the point 0, negative 2. OK? So again, we're looking into um, use the objective function to identify the maximum and the minimum values. So all I'm simply going to do is write out my objective function and plug in each of these coordinate points in for x and for y. So let's just start from the upper left and work our way around. So that would basically be negative 5 plus 4 times 2. I could have 0 plus 4 times 2. I could have 0 plus 4 times negative 2. And I could have negative 5 plus 4 times negative 2. Make sure I put whatever I plug in in parentheses. OK, so let's go ahead and evaluate, see what each of these evaluate each of these four. So 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 5 plus 8 is going to be a positive 3. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 times negative 2 plus 0 is negative 8. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. So therefore, you can see that our maximum value is going to be at the point 0, kind of 2. And that's going to give us a maximum value of our objective function of 8. And our minimum value is going to be at negative 13 at the coordinate point negative 5, comma, negative 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify uh, or use the objective function to identify the maximum and the minimum value of, using your, of your constraints for a linear programming problem. Thanks.